Hi, my name is Ted Chen. I have uh, my colleague Ching Hong here with me. We are software engineer working for Center for Open Source Data and AI Technologies from IBM. Uh, today, uh, I will go over the first half of the presentation and Ching will go over the second half of the presentation. Uh, so today's agenda, I will be going over uh, Feature Store, Feast, and doing a quick demo uh, of Feast. And then Ching will take over and he will cover KF Serving, Transformer, and also a KF Serving demo uh, that shows how it can work with uh, Feast. So let's start with uh, some general definition of what feature is. Uh, so features are individual values that act as inputs in a machine learning model to predict an outcome. Feature may need to be computed to become training features. So the engineered features are the features that used for training the models. Many of the ML development companies or organizations store features in a centralized fashion. So organizations have different requirements for feature store, but in general, it can be seen as a data management interface that enables data scientists, uh, ML engineers to create and share and distribute machine learning features. Um, so there are many feature store solutions. Feature store was first introduced uh, in Uber's machine learning platform called Michelangelo back in 2017. It was developed to build reliable, uniform, and reproducible pipelines for creating and mapping training and prediction data at scale. Before the system was built, the data science were building models on their laptop. The engineer teams were building one off system to serve model in production for each project. There was no established way to deploy model in production. But of course, Uber is, is not alone. Many other companies were facing similar problems. Airbnb, Spotify, Pinterest, and Twitter's all looking for solutions to manage and operate their own ML model and deployment process at scale. So they were all building their own in-house feature store to solve their own needs. The term feature store has since become more generic in recent years. In 2020 and 2021, there is an explosion of managed feature store starting to appear, such as Tekton, Databrick, Vertex AI, and SageMaker, just to name a few. So just a bit history uh, for Beast. Um, so Feast was originally founded by Joe Jack, the creator, Willen Pienaar, said Feast was developed to address data challenges at GoJack for scaling machine learning, for ride hailing, food delivery, digital payment, fraud detection, and a bunch of other use cases. It was developed in 2018, open source in 2019, and joined the LFAI and Data Foundation in 2021. And currently, Feast is one of the popular feature store project on GitHub. And so Feast is able to solve the following problems. First, model needs 
consistent access to data. Machine learning systems built on traditional data infrastructure are often coupled to database, object store, strings, and files. As a result, any change to the infrastructure will break a system. Please decouple model from your infrastructure by providing a single data access layer that abstracts feature storage from feature retrieval. Second, uh, deploying new feature into production is difficult. Typically, moving your engineered feature to production requires dedicated engineering team to set up the survey infrastructure. FEES aims to streamline this process by allowing data scientists to ship their engineered feature directly to the online store in production with minimal supervision. Third, model need, models need point-in-time correct data. ML models in production require a view of data consistent with the one on which they are trained. Otherwise, the new features may leak into models during training and accuracy of these models could be compromised. Last, uh, features aren't reused across projects. So the centralized registry allow uh, different data science teams in an organization to publish and share uh, features across multiple projects. So let me go over some basic terms uh, of this feature store. Um, so in short, this can be seen as a feature man managing and serving layer for your model in production. The three main concepts used by Feast and also in the industry are online store, offline store, and registry. The online store is, usual, is used to serve feature data to model from a low latency online store in production. Usually, the online store lets you uh, query features and use them as input for real-time model prediction. The offline store is used to serve feature for batch training jobs. And then the registry is used to store feature metadata. And keep in mind that Feast does not solve the following problem. So first, FIST does not want to be a ETL tools. FIST is not a feature engineering tool either. FIST is not a data warehouse. FIST assumes that you have already done the feature engineering jobs using upstream ETL tools, and you have stored these features in your data warehouse. FIST provides the SDK uh, to retrieve features from your data warehouse in a consistent way. And last, this is not a general purpose data catalog for your organization. That means this is purely focused on cataloging features for use in ML pipelines or system and only to the extent of facilitating the reuse of features. So let's dive into the FIS infrastructure. So what exactly do you need to run FIS? Prior to release 0 0.9, FIS was, uh, had, FIS had a dependency on Kube cluster. In the recent release, uh, FIS has been simplified to run entirely and can be run entirely on your laptop without any infrastructure and dependencies. So minimally, you only need to run pip install feast to get started. Also, feast provides CLI tools to automatically set up infrastructure registry, feature repo with sample features in local mode on your own laptop. So right away, you can start using it to get historical features 
overall materialize to move offline feature to the online store and use SDK to retrieve the online features right away. Besides local mode, currently Beast officially support running Feast online or offline store and registry on GCP, AWS, using cloud providers, native services. For example, if you choose the GCP uh, fee supports data store as the online store, BigQuery as the offline store, uh, data source, and GCS as the registry. Uh, GoCheck was the original sponsor. TechCon is currently the major contributor and sponsor for the feast uh, since last year. Gojek was major sponsor before the release uh, 0 0.9. Uh, IVN has been active and contributing to Feast since last year. Uh, Shopify provides you know, they provide some performance enhancement for Feast. Robinhood integrates Feast in their ML processes to provide data science of friendlier APIs. Salesforce built multi-tenant feature store using Feast as part of their ML uh, platform. Um, and so for for those uh, who like to run those, uh, run and use the latest feast feature store in Kubernetes cluster and set up a REST API to retrieve the online feature, this setup could, uh, could give you a minimal starting point to set up your own production ready feast online store with uh, your own model serving service such as a uh, cave serving. Just let me go over uh, the topology, my feature store on the cube cluster. Uh, I will use this as a base of my uh, my demo. Um, so basically, what I have here is, you know, I have three components already deployed, running in my cluster, and the online store is a Redis server. You know, I also have a feature server that serves a uh, REST endpoint, and then a cron job that runs materialized to uh, move the latest feature from offline to online store. And so beside those three components in the cluster, uh, outside, outside of the cluster, um, I store my feature definitions and feature store uh, config. Um, in a GitHub repo, the Chrome job and the feature server uh, use the repo to initialize themselves so they know where to find the registry online store and offline store. Uh, my offline features is stored in a bracket uh, file on the S3 and the registry is located on S3. Although the current release 0. Uh, 12 does not officially support this topology. Feast already has all uh, the components ready. So the only thing I need to do is to wrap them inside a container and deploy it to the cube cluster. So for this demo, I'm going to you know, use a Jupyter notebook to do uh, some quick demo of uh, how, to, how to initialize Feast and, you know, and use the SDK to get online features and also you know using some generic HTTP client like curl. Okay, so let me switch to my Jupyter notebook. Um, so this this notebook is developed to work with uh, this cave serving transformer, uh, which Ching will go over later. Uh, so this notebook will help you populate a this online store and run the this online serving REST API server in the Kube cluster. And the demo is tested with Feast 0.12.1 release. Uh, and I have all the steps to set up the cluster and run the notebook. Uh, you know, all the steps is all the steps is stored in this repo here. Okay, so let me 
quickly go over the demo. So first, uh, you need to run Bitcoin and clone the config and clone the feature definition and, and then run pip install feast. And since I use Redis and the S3, so I need to install Fist Redis and Fist AWS, uh, which I already done so, so I'm not going to do that again. And then after that, you can run the Fist SDK. So Fist SDK show you some help menu, so you can get started with it. And inside the feature repository, which is the one I just clicked on, there are two files inside. The first one is uh, driver repo. This is the uh, feature, uh, feature definition. It has uh, the entity and the feature view, and also it tells where my uh, driver stat pocket file is. And also there's a feature store config, config file. The config file uh, specify where to find my registry and where my uh, Redis server is. So with this two file, uh, I can do, I can use the file to initialize my uh, Fist SDK. So I just need to point in my, uh, it's, uh, Fist SDK to my repo. And that's how you initialize it. And of course you can run some, run get historical features to get historical data. Okay, there's my data. And you can also, uh, Get the unlike features you see in the SDK like this. Oh, I forgot to run materialize. So materialize will move the offline data to the online store. Oh, let me run again. Okay, we got data back. And let me use curl to get the online feature. Okay, so there you go. So I've shown you how to use the Fist SDK and uh, curl to get online features. So this is it for my part. So Ching will take over and uh, do the second half of the presentation. Hi, I'm Ching Huang. I'm going to talk about uh, cave saving and uh, how it works with the Beast feature store. Um, cave saving is a complete solution for production ML serving. It is based on Kubernetes for its proven scalability and uh, performance. Um, it is aimed to solve the model serving complexity problem. Um, such as, you know, uh, networking, auto scaling, system configuration, and resource monitoring. Um, this is particularly, you know, for the, you know, uh, data science uh, scientists. Um, KF7 has a, a clean and generic interface that work with most popular machine learning frameworks. Uh, so that uh, um, the user experience is going to be very simple and uh, consistent. Um, the project is founded by some industry leaders, including Google, Southern, IBM, Bloomberg, and Microsoft. I guess all these companies would like to see a vendor neutral uh, serving platform. Um, the key features for cave serving um, start from this uh, serverless inference for ML models. Uh, the model explanation helps to ensure that uh, um, the predictions are explainable, fair, and not biased. 
the pre and post processing um, helps to ensure that uh, uh, the data and its formats are uh, sort of properly prepared and used uh, across the entire uh, ML workflow. Uh, last but not least, the ability to do canary rollouts. Um, it means uh, a new model version can be deployed without uh, any service uh, interruption. Um, let's look at the solution stack here. Kubernetes is on top of a compute cluster as usual. Um, the next one is uh, Itzio, which is a service mesh layer. It is designed to support distributed microservices. Uh, over here, it enables um, cave setting to handle traffic routing and ingress to the deployed models. Um, next up is Knative. It is a layer for managing cloud native uh, applications on Kubernetes. Over here, it uh, enables cable serving to manage networking and the canary rollouts. It also helps to auto scale the use of CPUs and GPUs. Finally, on top is KF serving. Um, it makes use of this entire stack uh, to serve ML workloads running in different frameworks. Okay. Um, so let's look at the supported frameworks and uh, storage options. Um, as you can see uh, from sklearn, TensorFlow, PyTorch, SGBoost, Onyx, and so on. Um, so I would say most existing and new models can be served by this solution. As for the storage options, KF serving is capable of working with S3, GCS, Azure Blob, DVC, and HTTPS. Um, so that means the ML models can stay in different um, cloud storage systems, no need to move them around. The core element for cave serving is this inference service. Um, it is essentially a static graph with three components that uh, sort of work together to handle the requests for a single model. Um, the predictor uh, is the key uh, workhorse to uh, serve inference. Uh, the explainer is an optional component that provides model explanations. Um, the transformer is also optional. It handles pre and post processing for predictors and uh, uh, explainers. So on the right hand side, uh, you can see the diagram. A usage request will go through uh, pre processing, uh, explanation, prediction, and uh, post processing. Of course, you know, this is when all components exist in a single uh, inference service. The wiring and the inter-component uh, communication is all managed by KF, KF serving. All right, uh, we'll take a closer look at transformer next. Transformers are flexible. The uh, transformation logic is uh, implemented uh, uh, by extending this KF model uh, class in Python. And then a container image is created with the uh, custom code in use for depo uh, deployment. Um, 
Currently, there's no building transformers in Kev7. However, there are uh, a couple of examples. Uh, and these can be used as templates for new custom uh, transformers. The first one is an image transformer for, for um, port serve here. It takes raw uh, image input data uh, and converts it into input tensors uh, for the models to work. Um, the other one is this uh, feed uh, feast transformer, uh, yeah, for which I, I will go over in more details next. Um, this feast transformer uh, is all about uh, input augmentation with real time features. So a few things need to be developed for the transformer to work. The first one is um, the custom container image uh, with code to interact uh, with the Beast feature store. We coded the, uh, the pre-processing you know, logic here um, and leave the post-processing as pass through for now. Um, So as you can see here, the user request will be processed by this transformer code and uh, two you know, rest calls will be made. The first one is to this uh, Feast feature server to gather uh, the features. Uh, of course, the features are coming from uh, Redis. And the other, uh, rest call is to this uh, uh, predictor, and that is to you know uh, make the prediction. Yeah. Eventually, the driver rankings will be returned to the end user. Essentially, that's how uh, this transformer uh, works, you know, with beast and also um, with the. Um, Cave serving framework. Um, yeah, here we, we have a custom built uh, feature server container um, using Feast uh, SDK package. Um, and the properties uh, we used here are entity IDs, um, feature references, and uh, the serving URL. Uh, of course, the uh, driver ranking model is trained with uh, Feast offline store in Scalern. Um, the features to determine rankings are uh, driver average, uh, daily trips, account rates, and conversion rates. Okay. Um, next up is a short demo. Um, That the use case is to find the best candidate for a, a driver request uh, out of, for instance, five drivers, which are identified within certain distance from the requester. Um, so as you can see here, the, the, the input is going to be the unique driver IDs and uh, the output will be the predicted rankings. Right for the final uh, recommendation. Um, to build the solution, um, you can see the high level steps here. Um, yeah, let me switch out of presentation uh, to do some quick code review and uh, a short demo. Okay, so this is the uh, cave serving repo, uh, and here is the beast transformer example. Uh, the first thing I want to share with you is the configuration uh, or the, uh, 
the spec right, for my inference service. Um, here you see there are two components, transformer and the predictor. And uh, I have a list of uh, arguments, uh, which are quite dynamic. Uh, essentially, I just need to provide the uh, serving URL later to make it to work. Right. Um, the next thing I want to quickly show is the uh, the code that uh, uh, works with uh, Feast uh, feature server. So this is the uh, the pre process uh, handling. Essentially, it's gonna uh, do some parsing and uh, uh, form a HTTP request and uh, later forward uh, the final you know, input to the predictor. Okay. Um, here you see uh, I have you know, the the code uh, clone here. Um, I just updated this with my, um, you know, serving URL, and uh, I can show you the parts uh, we already have: uh, the feast uh, feature server and the Redis. And uh, of course, in my uh, namespace, there's no part deployed yet. So essentially, I'm going to use the uh, code control apply to deploy uh, my inference service. So here you can see two pods are you know, being deployed. In a few seconds, uh, this will be ready. Um, and then I'll just run this uh, Perl command um, to make a request. Essentially, it's using a input file I have here, uh, which has five driver IDs. And uh, yeah, we'll see the rankings coming out shortly. So let's see if the, the pods are ready. Okay, they are ready. So let's just uh, run the Command. Yeah, essentially, this goes uh, um, to my transformer, uh, gathered uh, the online features, and uh, make the predictions. Uh, apparently, driver three is the best candidate. All right, this concludes my part of the presentation. Uh, that go back to you now. Sure. Okay. Uh, let me summarize uh, today's talk. Um, so we have shown you that uh, uh, what this feature store is and how you can deploy Fist in a Kube cluster and also run query against the online feature store uh, using HTTP. Uh, also, we have shown you how to do model inference using Beast and Cave serving together in a cube cluster. Uh, we do think that there are still uh, feature, future enhancement that will make Beast, Cave serving and Kubeflow uh, better. Uh, so let's start with the Feast. The latest Feast uh, needs to bring back the, the out of box Kubernetes support uh, for those who like to run Feast on Kube Cluster. And also besides REST API, uh, gRPC server could be a nice addition for high performance online feature retrieval. And for the KF serving, uh, we also think that having generic built-in transformer for feasts will accelerate uh, the feature, the 
development and model de and model deployment. And for Qflow, um, for the overall ML workflow, we think feature engineering is very important and could be added as a key step in the Qflow pipelines. Uh, we could also add feeds to Qflow, like uh, training with TensorFlow using TF job. Uh, this could be done by extending training operators with feast so the offline data can be used to train models. Um, so this summarizes today's talk. And Chin, could you uh, change to the next slide? The next one. So we do have a few talks from our organizations. And if you like to learn something for the AI and Qflow and Cave Serving, please uh, join uh, those talks. Thank you very much. Thank you.